Okay, let's get started. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Beyond the Board, a whole new Trello. <laughs> I'm Lauren, and I'm here with Brian and Jordan, and we are very excited to give you a tour of all these awesome new features we've just rolled out for Trello to help you and your team be more productive. So let's see. So I want to start by talking a little bit about the journey to these features. And what I want to say is in the past, software was built and it was deployed and it was managed by technical teams. And in 2011, we sought to change that by creating the boards list and card framework that is so ubiquitous now in so many workflow to and tools. And the idea was always that a beautiful and powerful work organization tool that could be built and managed by the people that are actually using it. And it was uh, so well received that we've gained more than 50 million users since. Now this past year, the global pandemic has taken the physical office and moved it totally into the cloud, right? And actually many of these employees are never gonna go back to a physical office again. So more than ever, teams need tools to break down information silos and keep everyone con connected no matter where they're located. So this is, think of this as a whole new era of working. And the number of tools that we're using is growing. According to a recent Okta survey, the average large company has 129 different software apps that they're using. And smaller firms, it's not much better, 73 different apps. So it's no surprise that one third of people's day is spent just looking for information, right? And 44% of the time they report that they can't find it. So part of the problem is the sheer volume of information. It's spread across so many tools and that makes it hard to see what's available and what's connected. And when these important changes and priorities aren't communicated, they create this mental load, right? This anguish for teams. And this is coming at a time when stress is at an all time high. So we, as we approached our 10 year anniversary of building Trello, we thought that it was time to go beyond the board. So we unveiled the beginning of a whole new Trello built specifically to support teams as they usher in a new era of work. These features, along with our plans for the future, they give users a central vantage point from which to view, plan, and tackle their work. And we, are rolled, we rolled out new ways to visualize your data on a Trello board as a dashboard, a timeline, a table format, and more. So with these new views, you can better visualize the work to be done who needs to do it and which, which tasks are at risk. So you'll gain insight to manage both the project at large and the smaller tasks at hand by breaking them down. And then we also launch new card capabilities that connect between boards and across apps. So they turn Trello into your team's single source of truth. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Brian and Jordan and we're gonna give you a tour of these new views and card types that we're rolling out. Thanks so much, Lauren. All right, let's uh, take a look at Trello's new views and card types. Uh, I'm going to start off and talk about views. This is the first exciting change that has uh, come to Trello uh, with the, our recent launch. And so views give insight into projects on several different dimensions uh, as it relates to other work you're doing, as it relates to work happening across your team, and as it relates to work happening throughout your company. And with the five new views, you can quickly move from brainstorming to planning and tracking your team's work plus gain a line of insight into how your work connects to your colleagues across initiatives and reprioritize those things as needed. So what we've launched are four board views, map, timeline, calendar, and power, um, dashboard. And we've also launched our first team view, uh, table view. Although we do hope that we are going to launch all the board views as team views um, later in Q4, uh, so in you know, a few months or so. So you can access views directly from a Trello board from the view switcher. And now let's take a look at these five views that you can, you can now use uh, in Trello. The first is map view. 
it's great for location-based use cases like real estate agents showing properties, for example, or a franchise owner managing employees over multiple store locations. Trello's map view is particularly great for field sales and service teams who can track the things that they need to do at each location and see those items on the map. I actually recently spoke to a customer that installs cable in rural areas, and they use the map view to track job sites and assign employees to their routes for each day and week. With the map view, you can add a location uh, right from the back of the card, and it actually provides a preview of the map with that location on the card back. You can drag and drop pins to update the location of a card, um, similar to the way you would update a, a calendar you know, by dragging and dropping the card on that, which I'll show later. And as you can see here, from dragging and dropping it, the, view has, uh, the location has been automatically updated. And finally, you can add cards directly on the map by simply just double clicking any address. Or you can click the add card button in the top right corner to search for location and add a card. Pretty cool. Next up is timeline view. Timeline lets you see your team's pipeline and make sure there are no gaps or overlap that can take a project off track. Timeline view is great for multiple teams working together on a complex project like a product launch where there are a lot of moving pieces and deadlines. You can plan projects and manage workloads over periods of time and zoom in or out on the timeline for weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly views. Taking a look at some of the key features, uh, with Timeline View, cards will be organized by start and due date and grouped into lanes. By default, cards will be grouped by list, but each grouping brings their own dimensions to Timeline View. The list view is perfect for visualizing the work to be done and completed based on status. Member view is great for managing workloads. And label view, as you see here, is convenient for organizing sprints related to work types. Of course, you can even go with no lane grouping at all for a broader perspective of all cards organized by start and due dates. Make start and end date adjustments as priority shift and needs change with a simple drag and drop, but never lose sight of the critical tasks and how they relate to each other for each phase of the project. Cards that are not currently scheduled can be added to the timeline from the unscheduled card drawer on the left side of the timeline. As you can see, I click there and I'll open the card. I can click on the due date, add a start date and a due date and save it. And now this card, when I close though, is visible on the timeline. So we are constantly striving to improve timeline view and here are some of the features we'll be rolling out in the oncoming weeks and months. Um, all of that drag and drop goodness that you're used to in Trello to change dates, members, lists, and labels, hiding lanes to bring additional clarity to the timeline view, quickly scheduling unscheduled cards by simply dragging and dropping them from the unscheduled drawer to the timeline and filtering to surface the cards most relevant to you. Stay tuned, uh, really excited for a lot of these uh, features, especially all the drag and drop goodness. Next up is the calendar view. So calendar view is the best way to track work and flight, upcoming deadlines, and individual task management. Some examples include managing an editorial calendar or hiring process. Whether managing a monthly marketing calendar or staying on top of today's to-dos, calendar displays cards with due dates in one convenient place. With calendar view, you have calendar. With calendar view, you'll have all your items displayed. Um, not only with due dates, but also start dates and coming soon advanced checklist items. Similar to the map and timeline, you can drag and drop dates, uh, start and end dates to adjust the dates or grab a card and drop it onto the date to update the date automatically. And you can also toggle views to zoom in or out on the calendar with weekly and monthly views. Coming soon to the calendar view, we're gonna add card filtering to drill down to your most important cards, a day view so you can stay focused each day of the week, real-time third-party calendar syncing, which is gonna be really awesome, so you can sync your Trello boards into your Google uh, Calendar and Outlook calendars, um, all in real time, advanced settings to show and hide uh, weekends, advanced checklist items, and completed due dates, and we'll also be rolling out the calendar view on mobile in the oncoming months. Then we have Dashboard View. Dashboard View gives you insight into how your teams are functioning and keeps stakeholders aligned on the big picture. Dashboard brings a bird's eye view to projects and helps you visualize important metrics of success, like due dates, assigned cards, and cards per list. 
It's easy to generate tailored reports for things like making sure workload is balanced among team members and identifying inefficiencies that need to be addressed. With Dashboard, you can even rip bottlenecks before they begin. So with Dashboard, you can easily add custom tiles by simply clicking on the empty tile, selecting the visualization, selecting the metric that you'd like to visualize on the dashboard, and simply clicking Add Tile. And as you can see, the, the tile is ready, providing us a view of um, cards per label. If we want to switch to bar graph, simply go in, switch that, and now it's viewed and visualized as a bar graph. You can also hover over any area in a chart or graph to get more details of the data um, within that chart. And we've added historical data to the dashboard, so you can view cards per list in the past 30 days, so you can see how much work has progressed over that time. Coming soon to dashboard, we'll be adding historical reporting, like per label, per member, and per due date status over the past month, drill down so you can click into cards to see and update the cards they reference, big number tiles so you can see a spotlight of one card count magnified in a tile of its own, more types of data points in the dashboard, um, like view charts, uh, custom field app calculations or advanced checklist information, and also the ability to export the dashboard for easy presentation. And finally, there's the table view. Uh, so when work spans multiple teams or boards simply becomes overloaded with information, Trello's table view comes into play. You can choose the boards that you want to pull from, and table organizes the information into a convenient spreadsheet style list. You can sort it, filter it, and drill down to exactly what cards you want to see, including what to do and who needs to do it. You can track cross community initiatives along with your own and easily view and organize all of it within table. Managers and team leaders can quickly filter data and glean insights on the workload of specific individuals, upcoming due dates, or project status. Plus, individuals can view their work across projects and prioritize their time accordingly. And this is the first time that Trello is giving you view, a view across your boards, which has been a highly requested feature. So we really couldn't be more excited to uh, launch this team table view with you. So I'm going to show you real quick how to add boards to the team table. Select Add Boards, and simply just pick the boards from your team that you'd like added to the table. As you select them, they will all load up into the table view. Pretty simple. And if I scroll down, you can see that these boards have all been added. Uh, so now I can like filter and sort that information from there. So filter and sorting is a really cool and powerful table. It allows you to find the most uh, relevant info. You can filter cards by lists, labels, members, and due dates, and sort by due date as well. You can also access common filters with quick filters within the table. So as you see now, I've drilled down to um, cards assigned to me and in uh, ascending order by due date. So you can edit right in the table by simply uh, clicking a field to edit. Here I can check off due dates, I can update due dates. As you can see, I can add or remove members and cards, update labels that are from those boards, and move cards in lists all within the table view. And finally, tables can be uh, saved for quick recall by bookmarking the link. Links can also be shared with team members. Uh, just a quick note that um, in-app saving will be coming soon to the table view. So that's a quick look at all our tables, uh, that we've, um, all the views that we've released so far. And what's really exciting is we're actually gonna be opening up the views platform to third-party developers and adding more team-level views. Uh, so, you know, imagine being able to uh, view like the apps and services you rely on at this view level within Trello. So a Dropbox view maybe that shows only Dropbox attachments on the board or a Google Doc view uh, that could show you all doc attachments within the board and let you edit them side by side within Trello. Um, this is kind of how we're visualizing, hoping things go. Uh, imagine then from there, you could take that and zoom one level out to see Dropbox attachments across multiple boards that your team is working on or timelines across multiple boards. Um, so your organization is using to track company goals and initiatives. So that's the, uh, the future of where we'd like to go with the Views platform. Anyway, if you'd like to try Views today, Views are available to business class and enterprise customers. You can start a free business class trial and try Views today 
by going over to www.trello.com slash free dash trial. And next up, I'm gonna pass it over to Jordan, who's going to talk about card types. Thanks for showing us all the new views, Brian. Uh, as part of Trello's marketing team, I'm really excited to join this webinar today and show you some new card types that we have been working on. And cards are evolving to let users organize their work at a granular level. And by now, you might have taken advantage of making your Trello boards more organized and visual with the help of card covers. So card attachments can now be displayed on the front as a full size covers. And you also have the ability to change the color of a card. So these features mean more visual Trello boards and can also be a new way to display list headers and separators. But as mentioned earlier, in this webinar, we want to introduce you to three new types of card. So with link cards, board cards, and mirror cards, we open up possibilities for you. So you can uh, use Trello's visual framework to connect information across boards and even outside of Trello. So you can share it with teammates at the right level. Let's dig in. With link cards, you can enjoy a more connected experience across different external tools and platforms, including YouTube, Dropbox, Google Drive, Box, and Jira. So whether you're a company that is big or small, you might be a startup or a big corporation, and no matter the nature of the industry that you're operating in, you're very likely to try to achieve many things and very different things. So trying to complete tasks faster, creating new content, attempting to lower administrative costs, or enhancing the remote work experience for your employees are all very different tasks that need various types of tools. For example, Brian, Lauren, and myself, as part of the Trello marketing team, we use several SaaS solutions for email marketing design, social media, lead generation, and marketing automation. So the more integrated all our tools are, and the more options your team has to make them work together, the better experience for everyone involved. So with the simple paste of a URL, Trello cards can now take the form and display previews from Google Drive, Google Docs, Dropbox, YouTube, Jira, Figma, and many more. For a designer, you know, imagine that you can access all of your Jira tickets, Figma mockups, and project briefs in one place. Well, by enabling third-party information to live directly on Trello, this way we give users the ability to use Trello's visual framework to organize the information, even when the other apps may not be visual in nature. In nature. All right, I've prepared a few different cards for you. Let's start with YouTube. So the YouTube card lets you preview your videos from the front of a card. Imagine that you need to produce a demo video as part of a product launch. Why not just include the video as part of the workflow and let your peers view it on your Trello board without having to get distracted by opening another tab or window on your browser to go to the video platform. When it comes to juggling all your apps, context switching can really be a productivity killer. With the Google Docs link, you can not only preview the content, you can actually fire up the doc and work on the copy right off that board. And yes, when you start to work on your doc, let's just move that card to the in-progress list on your board. What about other social media platform? Well, for example, if you need to track down tweets from a campaign, you can just paste the URLs of those tweets to your cards and you can access and read them directly from your board. Actually, Let's read this tweet uh, because it's relevant to what we will show you next. People working on projects with teams who use different task management tools, how do you keep track of everything in your personal calendar? I.e., I'm working on projects with different orgs that use Asana, Trello, and ClickUp. How am I supposed to keep track of everything? Well, I think this tweet illustrates exactly what many of us are experiencing in our everyday work. Sometimes we also need to connect tools that solve a similar problem but that can vary depending on the workflow or the team preference. So Jira cards let you see status updates and basic ticket information. Let's see how that works. So like any other link card, all we need to do is to paste the URL in the title of the new card. And you will see the status of the Jira issue is reflected on the card front. And if you want, if you change the status of the issue in Jira, it will signal that accordingly on the Trello card, so it makes it really easy to follow the work. Now you can progress the card to the next step in your workflow. 
You might also need to work with another team that has uh, their workflow set up on Asama, for instance. Let's quickly take a look at how this would work. Well, we can copy the link of a task in a project that lives on Asana and paste the URL in the card title like we've done with the rest of the apps. Again, this information and data points being pulled into your own Trello work process, your tools are more integrated and experience is so much better for everyone involved in the process. And there are a lot more coming, so stay tuned. We will be updating our blog and social media with the latest on link cards. Now, to be able to use link cards today, your Trello account needs to be linked to an Atlassian account. And if you're a user who is part of an organization that is on the Trello Enterprise plan, you may not have an Atlassian account yet, but everyone will have an Atlassian account very soon. We are looking at June-ish, so stay tuned about this as well. And there are help docs about this as well. So if you just Google help using Trello with an Atlassian account, you can find a lot more information about this. Next up are board cards, the second type of cards we want to cover today. So board cards let you connect projects and cross-functional teams across Trello by simply pasting the URL of the board as a card title. It will automatically render a direct visual link to that board. So board cards let you highlight the interconnectivity of Trello boards and can help you connect and reference projects or instances within a project. So this in turn lets you build more complete business processes in Trello by easily organizing boards within one workspace as they pertain to one project. Again, I'm going um, to show you a little bit or talk about the marketing use case because that's the type of team that uh, Brian and uh, Lauren and I myself are on. But say that uh, if you're in charge of a campaign or a go-to-market strategy, being able to reference other boards related to design assets, product development, or sales enablement from one central place, this can be very helpful and save everyone a ton of time. Let's also cover a third type of card that we are currently working on. Coming soon are mirror cards. So these cards will allow you to connect information across boards so that a card updated at the, the source is mirrored on another card. So all you have to do is add a link from the source card to a card on the new board. And the card will appear just like the original card. With the mirror card, we help break down silos by making it easy to surface information to the right people with the right context without the hassle of manual updating in multiple places. And I briefly want to show you how you can convert these link cards to become regular cards. Like on any other card, when you hover over your mouse, uh, of the card, you will see the pencil icon on the top right corner of the card, which lets you access a menu with options. So choose the last item to turn the board into a regular card and follow just the same steps if you want to convert a regular card that has a link and is typed into a link card. That's all I have for you today. Oh, Jordan, that is awesome. i um, so excited about all these new card types and I hope everyone is also excited about all the new views. and. Uh, where we're going with the future of Trello. So I just want to say thanks to everyone joining, and now we're going to take uh, some time to answer any questions that you have.